Nice fish, Dick. <laughs> there. Nice one. Yeah. How big do you think he is? Six and a half. Yeah, not, but not a bad fish. But there's bigger ones in there, right? He's the gorillas. You can go in, <laughs> you know, he can go in three feet of water, he can go in 30 feet of water, and he's still going to catch fish. He just knows where they're at. He just, that's what he, you know, that's what he's done his whole life. You know, I've been fortunate enough to fish, you name them, I fished with them, you know. And, uh, you know, nobody, the Grizz, there was nobody better. You know, he knew it. He could bring us to a spot and, you know, it's things that guys know now. He, you know, he knew 50 years ago, so. I, I think to this day, if you had a fishing contest and you said, you guys are gonna fish, you know, for a week and you're gonna fish a different lake every single week and you're gonna fish a different species of fish every day, Grizz would hands down win it. put you on one end with Jimmy and that, and then Joe and I took off. <laughs> he got in there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, or about 2 o'clock, I think it was, and he drilled holes, holy crazy fast, he'd drop it down in the wall, I remember that, Joe? Yeah, we pounded him, we, yeah, we didn't want to leave him, we, got to, yeah. <laughs> we let those guys sit and not catch anything on the other end of the cigar. <laughs> <laughs> then, I, then we moved yeah, back we were, up we on the back. rocks that we were night. We pounded him, man. Then we moved up on the rocks that night, they bit good on the member, you caught, lost a lot of them too, but you caught. That was fun. Remember the time we had Grandpa there, the first time we had released fish? Oh, yeah. And he had about that little four, six pound walleye. You took it off and let it go, and look he gave you. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't even thought we were messing with him. Yeah. <laughs> the good old his dad, Big John, his dad was a heck of a fisherman, too. And his dad would be in the bait store, you know, buying bait. What is Ma, too? You know, buying bait, you know. And I always heard about, uh, we didn't call him the Grizz back then, we called him Dick, but I always heard about him. How good of a fisherman, you know? Well, I started real young. I started when I was three months old. My ma used to take us out. She'd put me in a picnic basket. And, uh, you know, being three months old, she wanted to fish and <laughs> put me in a picnic basket. And away we go. That's the way I was. I brought up in a boat almost. So I got older and started fishing on my own. and. Then I started, you know, I was working in a warehouse for many years there for a while. And right before I quit, a year before I quit, when I won the first time at the Camp Fish deal there, I took and uh, made the statement in the lunchroom, come spring, I'm gone. Well, there's always a smart aleck you work with. So all that winter, that's all I heard, come spring, I'm gone. Well, when spring came, I was gone. I never went back. We had a little little bait store in my dad's hardware store there, a little, little one. And uh, well, so we had to have, we wanted to have our name on boats, on the best boats. So we knew the Grizz in here and I knew, you know, there was nobody caught more fish than the Grizz. So one of the very first things we did was put Frankie's Live Bait Marine on the side of that S16 lawn. Once he got into guiding, uh, there's no question over all them years that he was the uh, uh, most well-known guide and did the most guide trips of any guide in the whole state, you know, because he would do one of a gosh for two weeks to start the year, then he would come here all summer. He did some work at Leach, and then in the fall, he would go back and fish the rivers down there in the, in the Twin Cities. So, I mean, he, uh, from the opening day until ice come, he, he was busy guiding. Most people, you know, they're, they're, uh, not used to fishing 12 to 16 hours at a crack, you know, but I mean, Grizz did it all the time. And yeah, some of them were literally ready to crawl off his boat when he got back in here, but one thing about it, they caught a lot of fish.
Oh, there's one. Oh, bigger one here. There he is right there. Oh. <laughs> Uh, strong one. <laughs> you don't want to give up. There. Yeah. The first time I met the Grizz was at a Camp Fish event fundraiser for young kids. And uh, uh, a friend of ours and a very close friend of the Grizz in their, in their Dick Sternberg had mentioned to me a number of times, he says, you gotta meet this guy. He's catching fish like I've never seen before. He's a walleye fishing machine. And I heard, kept hearing more about his reputation, more and more about him. And then the first time he volunteered as one of the guides at our Camp Fish uh, Jamboree event. And uh, uh, he had come in that day and he had a counter and he counts all his fish. I mean, at Camp Fish, he, he carries a fish counter. Like I said, who, who, who does that? Every fish that comes in a boat, he counts. And they had over 100 walleyes. I says, over 100 walleyes? Come on, come on. But, you know, he, he'd go the first day and catch all the walleyes, win the walleye for the three-day deal, you know. Then he'd go catch the biggest muskie, you know. So uh, I think that was kind of the part in, in Grizz's life where, where everybody really knew who he was, you know. Not only know who he was, knew what he could do, and we, you know, that there was no BS there, you know. Back in 19, well, 1987, somewhere in there, started fishing the Mississippi real heavy down in Pool 2. And, and uh, anyway, we were getting these big walleyes, you know, they're they a nice one, you know, they were eight, eight and a half, nines. Well, we got it closed and they tried to open it up again. Those guys that were ticked off about, you know, getting it closed, but they said, no, we're keeping it shut. This is going to stay that way. So that was thing that I'm proud of that I got into and, and helped and, and got it done with so a lot of people come off here for getting the river closed you know that they're grateful for it because they got a good fishery they don't you know a lot of these people ain't got money they can't drive up to Mille Lacs or Winnebagosh or Leech or Lake of the Woods so they got good fishery right in the back you can go down on the river that when they're biting I'll, I'll pull over a hundred walleyes down here now, I recognized him from up there. I was telling my girl, I'm like, that's the Chris. I know that guy. I gotta go down and shake his hand. He's the guy that made this catch and release. Yeah. A little small mouth. See, in the river, that's a nice thing on a river. You never know what you're gonna pull up. Yeah, rip jigging it, taking me and Grandpa. Well, I come up with it years ago. And, back in the 60s, 1960, somewhere in there. Yeah, we used to fish Winnebagosh a lot. And, well, we used to, didn't have depth finders or nothing then, so we, I don't know, we just started drifting and snapping jigs real hard. Then about 1964 or five, the, the green box come out. And well, before that happened, I used to fish this bar and I'd put up two gallon jugs with big weights on them and if the bar is like 150 yards long we no matter which way the wind blew we go into the wind snap our rods real hard with my grizz jig and no bait just the grizz jig and heck we pull hundreds of walleyes out you know in one day mm -hmm. launches up on on Winnie used to hate us to come by and we all fished on this reef and they didn't like it when we'd come by them because we'd sit and pull three out at a time. Everybody would have a fish on at the same time. Well, that's how that was started. And we kept doing it and got better. We did it all 
well, all year up until freeze up. In that day and age, when the Grizz was becoming uh, a, a, a part of a household word, uh, a household name in the walleye fishing industry in Minnesota, some of the standard baits, we were pulling spinners, we were trolling shad wraps, uh, we were lindy rigging. Corking was just kind of coming in, in, into its own, but snap jigging and speed jigging and rip jigging, as he called it, rip jigging, was a new thing. It was a brand new thing. He, uh, he also had his own grizz jig where he would just uh, hook on a minnow and, and, and rip jig, you know, and he was rip jigging, nobody else even knew what that was. He developed, he built on it, he built on it, he built on it, and today it is, a, I guess you could call it a standard operating procedure in the world of walleye fishing to understand rip jigging or snap jigging or pop jigging, they all have slightly different versions. But, but the, but the Grig, Grizz's contribution to sport, the sport fishing industry, and particularly walleye fishing, is legendary. Guess who sat in the front of the boat? They knocked the living crap out of me. Next day, next day was flat like this. <laughs> For a guy in his 50s, all the way to 81, he's still going by himself. Still goes, you know. And you know, it's a little bit, little bit slower, a little bit tougher. But you get, I don't care who you are. If you're going fishing by yourself and you're 81 years old, putting your own boat in, taking your boat off, and still doing it. Just the drive, right? Just the drive to go fishing. The other thing about Grizz is that he's well respected among other really good anglers, like the Al Linders and the Gary Roaches of Minnesota. Some of our top anglers, they have Grizz right up here as, as, as an equal, if not superior. To take all the walleyes, bluegills, bass, northerns, everything that he's caught. I mean, he, maybe he's caught a million fish. I don't know. I mean, he's probably caught more individually in his lifetime than anybody, you know? You know, he is a legend, and he's a real legend, because it's not its not anything that more than putting fish in the boat, man, more than knowing and going out with, you know, different people and giving them the best day. You know, there's a lot of people out there, too. A lot of people. That, that could say, yeah, that was the best day fishing I ever had. And like I say, I've, I've fished with, you know, everybody. And I still say, you know, the best days I ever had was in Grizz's boat, with, you know. I mean, everybody likes to fish, don't get me wrong, but actually literally love fishing. That's, you ain't gonna find anybody better than that. Fishing, you know, fishing and hunting, that's what I've done all my life and fishing, well, I fished 300 days of the year and I used to hunt the other 65 days hunting. So I'm 82 years old right now and well, I ain't gonna quit fishing until they put me in the pine box and that's the way it is, it keeps you going. You know, like I say, I ain't gonna quit fishing until I can't go anymore. No matter, I don't care how I get there, somebody carries me out to the boat when we get there or whatever, I'm gonna get there, so. Yep. We weren't catching any walleyes one year, and uh, I'm with with Billy Linder and and uh, and uh, Larry Dahlberg, and and they, you know everybody's up fishing and getting a walleye. I go, hey, I got a buddy of mine. The guys didn't know who the Grizz was, and I, said, I got a buddy of mine over over on. Uh, that we, we, were, we were over on a Winnie. He says, the Winnie camp growing. I says, he's catching them. I, I seen fish last week, he's catching them. So after everything was done, eight o'clock at night, we hops in the truck and we drives over to Winnie camp growing, me and Billy and Larry Dahlberg, and we pulls in and we drives through and, 
and to see Grizz's truck, he'd go up every week and sleep in his camper, him and, him and lady, him and a dog. And we pulled up and, and I go, that's his truck, stop, stop. And it's dark, you know. And the door opens, Grizz sticks his head out back then, just jet black hair, jet black beard. And these guys are looking and go, who's this? I, so anyways, we gets out of the car and go, Gr I called him Dick back then. I didn't call him the Grizz back then. I says, uh, getting any? He brought us over, flipped the cooler open, man. He's got eights and nines, you know. He's got all these big, big walleyes, you know. And these guys are going, whoa, whoa. We gotta know this guy, you know. So anyways, I says, hey, I tell him what's going on. He says, hey, can we come back and fish with, you know. He says, and I'm, he was guiding. He says, yeah, he says, you can come back and, you know, you can come back and, you know, I'm catching them out here in Ravens, you know, come on, come on out and let's see what we're doing. I never done it before. You know, so we're in our boats and we, you know, we got, we got paid customers and we're, me and Dahlberg and, in different, you know, two boats, and we're out there following the Grizz, man, and the Grizz are just whacking them, just whacking them, just whacking them, you know, rip jigging. And, uh, you know, at the time, we really didn't know what he was doing, you know, I mean, and, and uh, so anyways, we go a few times, and he's just, he's just making a fool out of us, you know, Larry goes, let's get out of here, he's snagging them. And I'm thinking, I'll get out of here now, but I'm coming up next week, I'm going fishing, I got to see what he's doing, you know, and that was come back, but, but it was amazing how many fish the guy would catch, you know. You know he's got the he's got his own look with his beard and and you know once people see him you know fishing here or fishing on the river or on the television shows I mean very recognizable that you know here's this guy with the beard it's the Grizz you know so we're down fishing uh, we're down fishing the Kinney Connect <laughs> Grizz and I are on the north end of the Kinney and. Uh, the silver bass were in there like crazy. And I was gonna keep a couple to smoke, right? All of a sudden, Grizz and I are up there fishing. Well, here comes uh, uh, Kent Herbeck and two other people in the boat. And they're all, everybody's catching silvers because they're just thicker than thick down there. So Grizz tells Kent Herbeck that, uh, he goes, hey, we're gonna keep like 20 of these things. We're gonna smoke them. So if you guys, if you guys get a few, you know, hang on to a few, we're gonna you know, bring some home to eat or put them in a the smoker. All right, all right. So Herbeck is in the other boat, and I, I seen them. They all tripled. They got all one, two, and three. Yeah, they, they had three fish. Hey, Grizz! He's screaming and hollering. He goes, "Hey, you still want uh, you still want some silvers? Yeah, yeah, we'll take some silvers." So he goes, "Grab the net." So I, I grabbed the net. So Herbeck, I think it was Whitey and somebody else, picked up their fish and they launched all three of these fish at the same time at me and Grizz from whatever, from his truck away or whatever. So here they come. One, two, three. I got all three of them in the net from just them guys throwing at them without, without uh, none of them hitting the bottom of the boat. Herbeck hollers from the other, other side of the boat. Hey, sign him up. The twins need a new catcher. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> He's famous for never wearing a hat, even though it's, you know, zero out and he's in a boat fishing on the Mississippi River in February or March or whatever. Never wore a hat, uh, hardly any coat. <laughs> you wonder, you wonder. And he used to sleep in the back of his pickup waiting for customers. And, and this is not in summer, this is winter too. Back of his pickup. And you say, how can you do that? He just kind of shrug it off. Oh, to it. One summer, Grizz had, he did 60 days in a row here and he had one day off and then he had 30 more to do and uh, on his day off he says, come on Terry, let's go fishing. I says, you just fished for 60 days in a row, you got a day off and you want to go fishing? Yeah, let's go fishing, he said. So we went fishing. But... Yep, yeah, back until I was about 68 years old, I used to keep my clients out. I had hats and, well, I had t-shirts in the early days and it said I survived the day at the Minnesota Grizz because I used to leave the, leave the launch in the morning at 8.30 and I'd come in at 8.30, quarter to nine every night. And then when I got it on a Judd's Resort on Winnie, this Bob Geis, he used to write in the sports, sport books and stuff, you know, magazines and, and he come to do a story, I was gonna take him out the next morning. So I come in, it was it was dark, it was nine quarter, or it was in the fall, I don't know, eight o'clock or nine o'clock, it was pitch dark anyhow. And 
I had this old guy with me out there, and he come in the doc, in the dock there, and, and uh, Ron Hunter and uh, Bob Geiser come down the dock, and Ron asked me, "How'd you do today? Oh, we caught a ton of fish, you know." And, and <laughs> anyway, the dock at Judd's Resort was about this high off the water, and the old guy crawled up on the dock, and he crawled up the pole, and and. Guy said to Ron Hunter, he said, what's the matter with him? He said, he just spent the day with the Grizz out there, been in a boat from 8.30 in the morning until whatever after dark, you know, and, well, and I used to do that with everybody, you know, they keep them out of there and they'd have to beg to come in, especially if the fish are biting good, you know. You know, as we sit here today, I'm 79 years old, going to be 79 a few months from now. The Grizz is 82, and I've had many, many people Ask me, ask me, yeah, when are you going to retire? When are you going to hang it up? And, you, you know, I had to give it a little bit of thought. When am I going to retire? And my answer to that is one week after the Grizz retires. You get in his boat, and everybody knows who he is when you get on the water. And I don't care if you're a quarter mile away or a mile away, everybody gravitates to where he's fishing. And they just, he can be sitting around fishing around 60, 80 people, and he's the only one catching fish. Probably one of the most unusual fishing characters I've ever met in my 50-plus uh, year career covering the outdoors and talking to fishermen. He's one of those, I've seen, a, met a few in my career. They have a sixth sense about fishing. So you go, should we go right? Should we go left? The guy will say, ah, let's go left. And that's kind of where he should have gone. I don't know, I just keep, you know, even all the stuff that I know, I, I learn every day something different, you know, myself, and you're out there every day, but the basics that I use, I, well, I, got, I go out there with a vengeance, I'm going to figure it out one way or the other, so there's no getting around that, you know, it's fishing's fishing, it changes and everything, everything, you know, every day changes or every hour as far as that goes, and yeah, you just got to you know, keep going at it until you figure it out, you know, and you, well, you start out with your structure and, you know, again, you know, and all that stuff, and you fish the spots you think they're going to be at, and, you know, and you just go out there with it, you know, you're going to do it. it. Seems to work out for me, so. How many, uh, how many told me the other day, how many fish do you think you've had in the boat three times? Yeah, I know we had a, a well, it sounds like a bunch of baloney, but we had 350 fish in a day, three of us rip jigging, you know. And, and well, even now I get this, well, this spring down on the, down on the St. Croix, Mississippi down there, I had 238 in one day, but every day I hit over 100. You know, it's, it's you know, it's, well, I, I, I get on them. 